Okay, good, no good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's local government education program. I'm Nancy Wadrago, Specialist in Community and Economic Development for Illinois Extension. Our presenter during this informational session today is Matt Schmidt. He's returning uh, to give um, another program to you today. Uh, he's the Deputy Director for Broadband with the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, and he runs Connect Illinois, which seeks to extend high speed internet to homes, businesses, and community anchor institutions throughout the state. Matt's been working hard with key players and partners in outreach to offer sessions that help folks understand current funding opportunities with the DCEO and develop broadband leadership across Illinois. All of those sessions are available to view on our program archives. I'll insert a link in the chat space towards the end of today's session. Uh, today's recording is also going to be on those archives. Today's session is going to cover an overview of the new Illinois Connected Communities Grant Program, and Matt will take your questions at the end. Before we begin, please know that any questions you have at any time, you can add those to the chat space as they come to mind, and we'll work to get those answered. Um, and if you have uh, any technical issues as well, put those in the chat space, and we'll uh, try to get you taken care of. Matt, again, thank you for being here. Um, looking forward to hearing more about this new uh, grant initiative for broadband access, um, and I'm going to turn it over to you to let you begin the session. Well, Nancy, thank you so much, and just special thanks to the University of Illinois Extension. Uh, we forged a, a great partnership here, and I, I think we're keeping each other busy these past uh, few months. And so it's great to join you again today, and it's really exciting. Uh, we, we continue to build our programming and, and, uh, and tap resources to do more on the broadband front uh, for Illinoisans across the state. And, and this program that we'll be talking about today, the Illinois Connected Communities Program, although it's quite modest in terms of its funding relative to our Connect Illinois uh, Broadband Infrastructure Grant Program, which happens to be the nation's largest, um, we think that this program that we talk about today, the Connected Communities Program, is gonna offer, tr offer tremendous value for communities and other stakeholders either seeking to participate in our infrastructure grant program or do other work on digital equity and inclusion and adoption. And so I think one thing that we, we know is that the world has changed incredibly uh, since we started our, our partnership and our broadband uh, webinar series uh, a few months back. Uh, the thing that's remained constant though is the need for ubiquitous, high speed, high quality, affordable uh, internet access around the state. And so we're, uh, we're trying to, to, to move forward with our programming, uh, make critical investments in infrastructure and digital equity. Uh, and be mindful that, uh, that we're all challenged uh, on a daily basis and kind of coping with the current environment. And, and so with that said, we're gonna try to make this grant program as, uh, uh, as user-friendly and flexible as possible, uh, as was the case with, uh, with our infrastructure grant program. The challenge with us here though today is that we have a very narrow application window. And just to, to put it all out there, it's because we're tapping fiscal year 20 funds and they need to be deployed by the end of June. And so everything I'm going to run through you or run through with you today was planned to be uh, uh, published about two months ago and we had to hit pause. And I'm really excited that we're able to, to get this going here. And so I do apologize though that folks may have to scramble to get applications in. We, we do want to be accommodating and if there are any questions, of course, ask them today, shoot us an email, give me a call. We want to make sure that you understand the, the opportunity before us here and also ways in which you can take uh, advantage of it. And so with that said, again, a quick thank you uh, again to Nancy, University of Illinois Extension. And I should say at the outset that this whole program is made possible uh, due to a strategic partnership between the Illinois Office of Broadband and the Benton Institute for Broadband and Society based in Evanston. They are nationally reputed in, in terms of uh, the communication and broadband and internet space. And if you're not signed up to one of their newsletters, you definitely should be. Uh, we just started a, a similar partnership by the, uh, uh, the Connect uh, Illinois Broadband Program. Uh, and so uh, it's a newsletter. If you get a chance to, to subscribe to one or any of the newsletters, great information out there on what's happening here in Illinois and around the country. And so special thanks to Extension, to Benton, uh, and to our philanthropic partners uh, in the uh, Illinois and Chicago areas to make this program happen. And so with that said, we're going to hop into it. And so uh, our first slide 
like I like to do is to, to reference our Connect Illinois website. And this is something that uh, has grown to be an incredible resource for us uh, in the Office of Broadband and Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, but also for applicants and other stakeholders, providers around the state and understanding what we're up to and how to, to leverage uh, the resources that we're putting forward. And so as you can see on the, uh, uh, the screen here, we have a, a vertical menu uh, to the right and it's growing. Uh, it seems like every week we're adding something here. Today we'll be talking about our community grants and specifically community planning and capacity building. Uh, and that's what this Illinois Connected Communities program is all about. You scroll further down, you'll see a reference to some of our broadband infrastructure grants. And then I may as well give some attention to our drive up Wi-Fi map uh, that has leveraged already publicly available Wi-Fi hotspots around the state, uh, aggregated what was shared with us in one map uh, and provided it to the public, just so folks know where they can access uh, free uh, publicly facing Wi-Fi. This map is a work in progress because we, we likely will open up the, uh, the survey instrument to allow for the addition of uh, new um, or other Wi-Fi hotspots around the state, but just wanted to point that out. And also we have uh, a resource below that, the low cost broadband um, page that will point folks to uh, low cost or free broadband service, uh, either ongoing or in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so I'm going to stop myself right there because I could go on and on about all the stuff that we have on our website. But moving forward, I wanted to get us to the main event, and that is the notice of funding uh, tab underneath the community grants header. And so if you were to click on that, it'll take you to the next page. And for folks who've participated in State of Illinois grants in the past, this is a, a familiar page. Uh, this is our Notice of Funding Opportunity page. You'll see this NOFO, if you will, posted here. Uh, you can see at the bottom, there's $150,000 at stake for this competitive matching grant program. I'll be talking a lot more about that in the slides ahead. But if you scroll all the way down, you'll see uh, a couple of pieces here. One reference to our June 12th application deadline, which is coming up fast. And then secondly, we also have a lot of links here that will take you to various information. Uh, the GATA link, uh, the technical assistance link will actually <laughs> highlight what we're talking about right here. Um, but you can click on that and it'll take you to a video recording of this session if you want to view this again down the road. And then moving forward, you can see a number of links at the bottom, the uniform budget, uniform application, Illinois Connected Communities, no phone. And then we have the mandatory disclosure and the conflict of interest disclosure forms. I'm not going to run through each one of those today. I think the one that's probably most beneficial to our time is the third one down, the Illinois Connected Communities NOFO. That essentially tells you what this opportunity is all about, how you can take part, what you need to do to apply. Um, but the uniform budget, uniform application um, documents here, as well as the two mandatory disclosures, also need to be submitted with a complete application. And so moving forward, Here's the overview of our program. Uh, we have our, our Notice of Funding Opportunity, the Illinois Connected Communities Grant Application. There's $150,000 available, and we're going to uh, build a cohort of approximately 10 communities around the state that would be interested in, in working with the Illinois Office of Broadband, the Benton Institute, and other uh, uh, experts and consultants in the area to leverage best practice curriculum to really move the bar in terms of community capacity and planning ability. And again, our submission deadline is June 12th, so it's coming up quick, but we want to make sure that folks uh, have an opportunity to get good applications to us. And so we have a quick checklist checklist at the bottom here. Make sure you read this NOFO carefully. It's not nearly as long as our infrastructure grant NOFO, but nonetheless, some important information in here. We want to make sure that you're submitting a complete application. Uh, use whatever templates, uh, in, in particular, the uniform budget and uniform application that were referenced uh, uh, in the prior slide. And then just make sure that everything is, is labeled and attached accordingly. And so uh, we don't want to be sticklers, but we also don't want to see uh, applicants uh, that are proposing great projects and partnership opportunities uh, submit applications that are not complete. And so our next um, piece here, how to submit an application, uh, we, we give folks two op opportunities, one to the broadband at illinois.gov website, uh, I'm sorry, email account broadband at illinois.gov, uh, or you can submit three paper copies to our office in Springfield. I would encourage folks to send us an email with an attachment. I think it's a lot easier for all involved. And we'll actually send you a confirmation receipt uh, upon your email hitting our inbox. And so again, that's broadband at illinois.gov, uh, kind of the one-stop one shop for uh, 
fielding questions our way or uh, submitting a, a grant application in this case. And so our grant program, the general overview here is that we are hoping to build off of our $400 million Connect Illinois Broadband grant program that's focusing on infrastructure and adding value with capacity building and community planning around infrastructure investment or um, work towards digital equity, adoption and inclusion. And so there's not one set outcome from this grant program. Uh, we really wanna empower communities uh, to kind of come to us with their ideas at various stages in their own kind of broadband and technology conversations and determine if a partnership at this time would be mutually beneficial. And so all this information on this slide and the ones that follow comes straight out of that notice of funding opportunity, that NOFO document. And I promise I won't read it for folks. Um, but we do include three definitions that are important, I think, just for the way we talk about um, broadband uh, in various aspects of it, at least in this NOFO and this uh, application opportunity. And so broadband access refers to the availability of basic broadband service currently defined by the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, is wireline service of at least 25 megabits per second download, three megabits per second upload. There's a lot of conversation about whether or not that definition is sufficient to the needs of today, uh, let alone tomorrow. Um, but for, for uh, clarity's sake, uh, that's the definition that we have adopted uh, for, for what it's worth, we're indexing our definition to changes that the FCC may make down the road. And so that number could change down the road, but for the purposes of this grant application, um, broadband uh, is defined as 25 by three service. And then broadband adoption, we refer to as consumer subscription to that broadband service. And so when you look at, uh, without getting into the weeds here too much, various barriers exist uh, for consumers to, to utilize the in internet uh, to maximum benefit. Sometimes it's on the access front where infrastructure may be lacking. Sometimes it's on the adoption front where you, you simply may not have affordable opportunities or there may be other barriers in, in its place. And so those are two pieces that we wanted to call out and define uh, in this NOFO, just for the sake of this application process. And then again, for this application, broadband utilization, we're referring to how broadband is used by individual households, businesses, community anchor institutions, whether it's for improved quality of life, employment, commercial opportunities, economic development, or really any number of related applications. Uh, we've heard a lot about remote learning, distance learning uh, in light of COVID-19, certainly with telehealth. We've talked a lot about precision agriculture, but also working from home is, a, is a, as we all well know, uh, a new way of, of doing business and being productive. And so all of those applications and many more uh, fall under the, the broadband utilization umbrella, at least for the purposes of this application process. One thing that we wanna be intentional about too is leveraging you know, others' um, uh, you know, resources, tools, frameworks for thinking about broadband. We wanna apply a holistic approach. And so we don't wanna pigeonhole ourselves as an office or in terms of this program and this opportunity as being simply for infrastructure or adoption. And so the, the uh, schematic in front of you, uh, it, it's from the Intelligent Community Indicators, the Intelligent Community Forum, uh, which does a lot of work in this area. They've put together a curriculum that we'll be borrowing from uh, for the Illinois Connected Communities Program. And I won't get into all of these pieces, but if you do become an Illinois Connected Community or you wanna benefit from the curriculum that we'll be sharing, this is uh, you know, one of the frameworks that we'll be applying. And again, this information is in, included in the application materials. And just for your information, if you'd like to use it to, to help think about and organize your own application. And again, we don't expect that all communities are, are thinking uh, holistically about all of these um, aspects of, uh, of what it constitutes an intelligent community, uh, so to speak. Uh, but nonetheless, we wanted to put them out there and, and, and give you an opportunity to, to preview some of the framework for, uh, for our curriculum that lies ahead. So there are several things that are expected of our Illinois connected communities throughout the, the program. And what we originally envisioned was that there was gonna be a lot of uh, hands-on uh, in-person engagement, but obviously in light of COVID-19, there's some unknowns in terms of whether or not that's gonna be practical or even possible uh, in the months ahead. And so what we envision is a uh, engagement that lasts six to 12 months, probably closer to 12 months. So up to a year engagement uh, between our uh, program organizers, the uh, Office of Broadband, the Benton Institute, other uh, national experts and resources. Uh, and what we're asking for communities is that first, you serve as a fiscal agent and have adequate capacity to participate actively over the course of that program, including providing leadership, 
project and steering committee management, event hosting to the extent that happens, uh, and grant administration. And secondly, communities must commit to recruiting and supporting an inclusive community steering committee that reflects community composition. This is a big piece here, folks. We wanna make sure that an application reflects the community. It doesn't necessarily have to be from a city or county, a school district or another community organization could be involved and in, in service the fiscal agent or the lead. But that steering committee that's gonna be central to this process that, that will help us build value and have something truly to show for this uh, effort needs to be reflective of the community. And so some thought needs to be given to, to what that steering committee might look like and, and who would be involved and what community organizations would be tapped for that. And then third, we have project managers and steering committee members. I don't wanna make this sound as though it's a big process or, or any formality with big expense or anything like that, but we want some intentionality behind that. And so when we say a project manager, we're really talking about somebody who's dedicating at least a portion of their time to steering this process, uh, both in terms of the steering committee, making sure deliverables are being accomplished uh, so that the vision and the goodwill and the energy that's leveraged on the front end uh, actually is consistent throughout. And we don't have you know, anything falling through the cracks, certainly from an organizational standpoint. And then fourth, we wanna make sure that project managers, uh, steering committee members participate in select programming with other Illinois connected communities and state regional or in-state team led meetings. And again, we originally envisioned that there was gonna be in-person engagement. We're gonna keep that open in terms of what's possible and practical in the months ahead, but certainly you can expect that there'll be some, uh, some quality screen time here uh, with uh, not only the, the resources that we're bringing to bear in terms of national expertise uh, in our partners here in Illinois, but also other members of the initial uh, Illinois Connected Community Cohort, whereby we can learn from each other. And so there will be that level of engagement, but again, we wanna strike the right balance that it's not too much, that it's just the right amount to, uh, to add the right kind of value and uh, direction for this process for individual communities and applicants. All right, you're moving forward here. The NOFO spells out that at any point during the program, um, Illinois Connected Communities may invest their grant funding toward one or more of the following areas. And so uh, local or non-state -state funding is not required, but it can be leveraged or added uh, for added value to get more out of the, uh, the up to $15,000 grant that you would be receiving from uh, the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, the Illinois Office of Broadband. And so here are four examples of, of activity, of tangible things that could come from that $15,000 grant. Uh, but again, we wanna leave it open-ended a little bit because we know that communities participating in this program may not all be at the same point in their kind of evolution towards, I guess, broadband actualization. And so if you wanna to commit to something in your application, you certainly can and offer as much detail around that as you can. But if you're not quite sure, we understand. And so we wanna use this application as a way of, of ascertaining where you're at today, uh, getting a sense as to where you want to go through this process, but we're not necessarily going to hold you to that. And so again, these four um, bullets here, additional broadband related support, technical assistance, additional consultative services, a connected community project manager or steering committee overhead. We understand that there are costs involved of doing this work. And so just uh, covering some of that cost could be one use of the funding, a broadband app, uh, asset mapping, needs assessment, feasibility study, just some examples of, of some tangible study that could come from this or other planning and preparation. And so again, just some examples of how the dollars could be utilized. Moving to the next slide here, I mentioned this a couple of times now, but in terms of the funding, uh, up to $15,000 available per applicant. We expect probably 10 uh, uh, applicants or uh, grantees in our first cohort. Uh, counties, cities, villages, school districts uh, are among the eligible applicants, and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, but we have $150,000 uh, that we can leverage for this, and so we want to have that, that right mix of the, the grant amount and the number of participating communities in that first year cohort to make this uh, you know, a winning formula. I think I said this during our last webinar series on the infrastructure grant program, but the release of this NOFO does not obligate the department to make an award or to uh, deploy all $150,000, but we really hope that we're going to be overwhelmed with great applications and, uh, and that this is the start of a really meaningful uh, program, uh, both for the Illinois Office of Broadband, for our, our project partners around the state, but also for individual communities and, and other participants at the local level. And so the next piece here, I just wanna emphasize uh, in D, eligibility information. Folks, if you are not GATA, 
pre-qualified the Grant Accountability and Transparency Act, GATA, make sure that you are. And you can send us a quick email at that broadband at illinois.gov address to confirm your status. Otherwise, look into that. Make sure that you're GATA pre-qualified because you've got to be GATA pre-qualified uh, in order to, to apply and participate in this program. And so take that seriously. Uh, other aspects of the eligibility uh, information here, eligible applicants, you know, uh, for this program could Im include a political subdivision. I, I listed several uh, previously. Those include school districts or local units of government, uh, an Illinois nonprofit or organization, a cooperative association, a limited liability corporation, uh, organized for the purposes of promoting community or economic development, uh, or others perhaps. Uh, but the point here is that you really have to go back to what is the, the, the charge of this grant program, you know, having that steering committee that's reflected of the community, that broad community participation. So if you're an applicant uh, in one of these pools, so to speak, and you're thinking, gee, should I take the lead on this or should somebody else, or do we have kind of the right mix of local energy to pull this off here? You know, think seriously about what we're asking for. So just because you could be an eligible applicant doesn't mean that you should necessarily apply. You really have to take seriously that, that level of community engagement or the capacity for you to, to build out that engagement in short order. And again, uh, eligible project areas, you know, we are flexible in terms of what constitutes a community. So you can come at us uh, with different ideas, uh, even if it's a little bit more regional in, in scale. Uh, the point here though, is you've got to have the right uh, folks at the table. It's got to be at the level that you can actually do real work, have real conversations. And I'll get into this in a moment, but we're asking uh, that each of the participating grantees, the, the communities, that they produce a, a, a broadband strategic plan at the end of this as well. We'll say more about that in a moment, but the point there is you got to have the right kind of level of engagement here uh, to have the meaningful conversations the, uh, and, uh, and produce the, the deliverables that make sense for those participating. And so a, a word about eligible program costs. Um, this program will wrap up uh, by June 30th, 2021. And depending upon, I think the pace that we set and, uh, and how quickly communities are, are able to engage and, and build momentum, uh, this first round, uh, this first cohort, uh, some communities therein may wrap up their work well before June 30th. Applications. Again, here's our uh, contact information. If you have any questions, broadband at illinois.gov tends to be the best way of contacting us. Certainly can uh, pick up the phone. Uh, we do have a physical address, but uh, I think electronic uh, communications are probably the, the easiest and most reliable right now. However, if folks are having an issue with uh, having a grant packet, uh, I'm sorry, an application packet in front of them, you'd like us to send you a hard copy version, you certainly are welcome to ask. And you can send us a letter or also you could you pick up the phone and, and make a request or send an email that way. Just want to make sure that folks get this information and you don't have to necessarily rely upon uh, electronic communication to do that. All right, this is just a, a quick overview of what we're looking for in terms of uh, the contents and form for the application information. I'll just cut right down here. The important piece here are the bullets uh, that you include in your application, uh, the uh, uniform application, the uniform budget, uh, the application information that is outlined uh, in the NOFO and later on uh, here in this uh, slide deck, and also the two mandatory disclosures. And so just to make sure that you check through that list and, and you have that, uh, that complete application before you file. And then this is just a, a reminder uh, in terms of applicant registration. If you have any questions with this, let us know. And then again, at the bottom here, it, uh, it again states that all applications must be due by 5 p.m. on Friday, June 12th. So bear in mind that that's coming up fast. And again, we've already been over this, but this is stated in the NOFO a couple of times. You can submit an email or send us a hard copy application. You'll get a confirmation email from us if you submit electronically or if we get your application ahead of the deadline. Now getting into the scoring criteria, a lot could be said about this. Um, we're gonna be putting together a merit review team that will review every one of the applications we receive. And we do have a, uh, some criteria that's uh, included here that I'll, I'll run through real quickly. Uh, we reserve the right to award uh, grants based upon geographic balance. And so this is a competitive grant program. We will be scoring every application that's eligible that we receive, but we also wanna try to uh, achieve some level of geographic balance around the state. And so that's another factor. 
And so you look at these uh, criteria here that we've listed. First, the level of commitment and appropriate skills of the lead organization to manage the local program and the ability to serve as the fiscal agent. Again, those are requirements and we'll be grading accordingly. Uh, secondly, the commitment of the lead organization to recruit that inclusive project steering committee. We really take that seriously. And so we want some thought given to, to your capabilities of putting that steering committee together and, and, and leading them through this process, at least at the local level. And the commitment to be actively engaged throughout the course of the program. And then the level of uh, demonstrated support from key community organizations, whether it's local government, chambers of commerce, economic development groups, school districts, et cetera. Now we wanna make sure that this application and everything that flows from a potential grant is truly organic and reflects you know, the community's uh, vision. And then next, the level of demonstrated need for improved broadband access, adoption, or utilization. This is a point that's really worth emphasizing because we have communities that are all over the board in terms of maybe current access or infrastructure or choice, affordability, uh, the, the degree to which community members are adopting and how that broadband service is being utilized. And so we understand that there's a lot of variation among potential applicants and certainly among communities in the state. And so we don't have one set, I guess, prototype for what an application, an applicant or a grantee should look like. If you feel that you can benefit from this program, make your best case, put it in an application, send it to us, and we'd love to make you part of our first round cohort. And if we're compelled that there's another program or other resource or another cohort that needs to exist to, to respond to the level of interest that we hear through this process, I'm certainly open-minded to that. And so I want to use this as an opportunity, I think I said this in our last grant program, to really test the market to see what communities and uh, eligible applicants are looking for in terms of this kind of programming and partnership. All right. I'm just gonna um, flag that this grant program is a little bit different than our last one where in their indirect cost rates are eligible. And so as you get into the grant um, budget process, that's something that we'll flag. Otherwise, I just wanted to give attention uh, to these pieces that are in the NOFO. Uh, there are reporting requirements after uh, this process, uh, after a grant is made. We don't want grantees to be surprised by that. So this is some information that is uh, included in the NOFO. Likewise for monitoring and auditing, um, we just wanna make sure that, uh, that every dollar that the Office of Broadband uh, invests, whether in programming or partnership or in grants, that we're getting uh, what we, uh, we expect to. And so uh, you can expect that there will be some follow through on a number of fronts. Nonetheless, we wanna make this a fully enjoyable experience for all applicants. So don't let uh, this level of accountability deter anyone. All right, and that brings us to Appendix A. So this is essentially the end of the NOFO. If you have it in front of you, you know, flip back to the end, Appendix A. Just some instructions for, uh, for what we expect and how we um, would like applicants uh, to apply. Treat this as an outline for your application. And uh, you look at those, those six bullets, those six kind of documents that we're, include, that we're asking uh, each applicant to include in a full and complete application. The most important piece here is this. It's what's described in Appendix A, your opportunity to really bring to life your vision for how to leverage the Illinois Connected Communities Grant Program and, uh, and be a successful grantee. And so I would, I would suggest using this as kind of an outline for, for submitting your application. And I'm not gonna run through everything here, folks. Um, we can come back to this if there are any questions. You, you, hopefully you have this in front of you. Um, but again, I wanted to flag that Appendix A really is intended to be kind of that, that blueprint for how we want your application to look. Uh, so that we can kind of run through it, check off uh, the list of, of, uh, of things that we're looking for. And, and points will accrue accordingly based upon uh, your responsiveness to these questions and, and, and pieces here. So community description here, we wanna understand your community, your anticipated focus. Again, you don't, we're not gonna hold you to everything you, that you put in this in terms of your focus and what you hope to get out of this process because you're gonna be learning along the way in many cases. Um, but give us your best understanding of what that vision, that capacity, uh, you know, that, uh, that plan might look like right now. And then again, we talk about uh, the description of supporting organizations and letters of support. And uh, I think that this is just really important that our applications reflect uh, the community and that it's not a simple applicate uh, kind of operating in a vacuum, putting forth a what otherwise might be a great and compelling application. We really want that application to reflect uh, the interests of the broader community. 
One thing that I should mention here, I didn't, I, I didn't uh, stop and pause earlier on, is the production of a, a broadband strategic plan at the end of this process. This is not intended to be some all-encompassing, you know, final word on broadband and your community's vision thereof. But we do want something tangible that we can point to, whether it's an action plan, a strategic plan, and something that demonstrates, you know, where you are right now in this process at the at the end of the Illinois Connected Communities Round One cohort, where you want to go and how you plan to get there. And so that's not something that we're asking for in the application, of course, but it's something that we want you to be able to produce in partnership with uh, our consultants and the expertise that we're leveraging um, to, uh, you know, to have to show for your effort at the end of the process. I can say a little bit more about that if you'd like. Otherwise, I'd like to just transition real quickly to the uniform budget. Uh, template that's offered in the NOFO. Earlier on, we had those, uh, those six uh, bullets, the six links that are included in the NOFO page off of our website. This is one of them, the uniform budget. I don't want folks to be overwhelmed by this. Uh, we are required to include the uniform budget and uniform application uh, in all grants that we put forth. Um, but I just want to emphasize, we want to get as much good information as we possibly can, but this doc, this piece right here, the uniform budget, will not necessarily be determinative of whether or not you get a, a, an app, a grant or, or not. And so give serious thought to this, fill it out to the best of your ability, but don't stress over it either. Uh, I, don't, I don't see anything that's included in here as disqualifying you necessarily, but it helps round out your application. And the same holds true for the the uniform application link that's included in that NOFO. Um, there's information that we want to uh, collect at the front end uh, in a uniform way from one grant program to the next. Answer to the best of your ability, but again, don't stress about uh, any issues you might have. We're certainly willing to answer any questions, um, but again, the most important part of this is, is that information in that direction, that outline that's provided in, in Appendix A of the NOFO uh, itself. And so uh, with that said, We'll turn it over to questions, folks. I hope I still uh, I have you uh, interested in this program and uh, I'd be happy to shine as much light on uh, the nuances uh, as we can here. Thanks, Matt. Can you hear me okay? I can. All right, so we had some initial questions um, that came across towards the beginning of the presentation around the newsletter and the NOFO. I want everyone to uh, know that I put the um, NOFO link, uh, the link to the online notice of funding opportunity with those six links that Matt was talking about um, and all of the information you'll need, the tools you'll need is at that link. I put that in the chat box. Um, a couple of folks were um, wondering where that was. So I put that link in the chat box. Um, there was a question about the, the new newsletter uh, that uh, DCO and the Benton Institute have put out and people want to know how to sign up. So if, the, if anyone has a link like Adrian or, or Matt, if you have a link and you want to put that in the chat box, that would be super helpful uh, so people can sign up for that newsletter. Um, and then uh, we had one more question and I'm just giving you guys the questions that I answered, right? But um, there was another question about if um, the session recording would be available. Yes, and I put the link to that also in the chat box so that you can find the recordings um, on our website. So for this program, we have a lot of questions as well. Uh, people want to know um, activities that can address any of the focus areas, areas but don't have to address all of them. Uh, is that okay? Is it okay to only address some or do they have to address all focus areas? No, you certainly don't have to address all of them. Uh, we, we just understand that every community is different. There may be different focus. You may be a different part uh, or, you know, segment of your kind of your evolution in, in broadband, so to speak. And so I think an ideal application will recognize that, that uh, there's a holistic approach uh, to kind of community broadband involvement. Um, but if there's a specific area that you think is, is most in line with your community's immediate needs, feel free to highlight that. And so we really don't want applicants to, to give, I guess, lip service to different aspects of that, uh, 
uh, that intelligent community framework, so to speak, um, and maybe dilute the power of, of the focus of the thing that they're most interested in. And so I would say just, just really you know, be genuine in what you want to elevate and prioritize and, and allow that to, to show through in your application. Knowing full well though that uh, some of the curriculum that we'll be running through with communities will be more holistic in nature and may include and introduce communities to, to other aspects of, of kind of a, an approach to broadband. Thanks. Um, at the end of the six to 12 month process, communities are required to create a broadband strategic plan. Uh, this is a de deliverable. Okay, so that was a comment made by Adrian and um, again, uh, it was a question I think that was posed. You had probably um, addressed that towards the end when you said it can be an action plan and things like that. But did you want to go into any more detail about deliverables that are just as um, sort of uh, um, deliverables that are, are you know, touchable? Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think, you know, the, the two big pieces here are that we want to have an authentic and, and representative, you know, a broadband steering committee uh, that we engage with throughout the course of this project. And so that's something that we want applicants to give a lot of thought to on the front end of this and just make sure that, all right, you know that you are expected to do that, that you have the capacity to do that, and that that's something that will be consistent more or less throughout the course of, you know, our engagement in, in this, uh, this curriculum. Um, secondly, the, the broadband strategic plan. And I, again, I don't want applicants to be overwhelmed or intimidated by either one of these, the steering committee or the strategic plan. But those are the two tangible things, so to speak, that we're expecting. All inclusive touch upon every aspect of broadband. We want it to reflect, you know, kind of what the community got from the program where that community is at the at the, the end of this engagement and where they hope to go next and how they hope to get there. And so that's at a minimum what we, ho we hope that strategic plan establishes. And so there's not one way to do it, um, but again, we're gonna help folks through that. We're not gonna do it for the communities, but we're gonna help help the, the, the grantees through that process. And again, it's really, it's really set up so that you're leaving with kind of an action plan on, on where to go next and how to get things done. Thanks. The next question is, would a $7,500 grant application have a better shot at winning versus a $15,000 application? I don't think so. I mean, at the end of the day, this is the first time that we're running through this process and we, we can't take on too many communities in round one. And so we want to have that, that kind of that that sweet spot where we've got the right amount of grant funding available for communities so that they can do some, some important things through this process, but also that we have the right number of communities so that they can get the, I think the, the requisite attention and, uh, and, you know, benefit from the engagement, both with, you know, the Office of Broadband and with uh, our, our project partners and, and the consultants will be bring into the, 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 the conversations. And so in, in this round one, I wouldn't get hung up over, you know, the, the, the dollar amount being, I guess, requested. I think just assume that $15,000 will be made available to all grantees. And as you put a budget together, um, you know, use that as your assumption. That's great. Um, we had a, a question about the Grant Accountability and Transparency Act. Um, so the, there was a concern that the process is time consuming uh, for those who, who haven't uh, been able to do that, uh, um, especially in light of some slowdown with um, government entities and um, needing to find the corresponding information necessary. And so did you have any sort of helping comments for, for that, for anybody who's really struggling with that? You know, I would just stay here for the sake of this conversation. If you're having an issue with any aspect of, of GATA pre-qualification, you know, shoot us an email, give us a call. And We'd be happy to run through the process, but I've asked this question in several ways and I've been told, you know, it, it, it's doable uh, given the time was not particularly onerous. Uh, that being said, I have not experienced it myself, but I just want to emphasize 
don't let that be the reason you don't apply. Shoot us an email, give us a call right away, and we'll try to help uh, help you through that process. Perfect. Um, Matt, wh while we're doing this, let's um, get you over to the phone line that you had on here. I'm trying to find the the um, the phone line. Maybe we can see if if you can get over to that line instead. You, it's pretty good, but maybe we could improve the, there's some timing out of the, you know, you kind of, the last couple questions. Do you have the phone line? You know, Nancy, I'm trying to move over. <laughs> and we can just continue. If at some point you can find that, we'll we'll switch over. But um, I can go ahead and look at this next question. Um, the other thing is, uh, since we're sort of getting closer to that time, I'll put the poll up while um, we are going through questions, so that people can vote and see um, uh, see that we want to gather some information about your knowledge gain during the program today. Uh, really happy to present this information to you and want to make sure that it's relevant. We've got some time left to ask questions and continue knowledge gain. So um, please do put any questions uh, that you have into the chat box as we're um, finishing out the, the question and answer. Um, so the next question, Matt, was that there's a $50 million um, grant that was provided to Telcos to expand infrastructure. So it seems that planning and adoption and use is drastically undervalued. Can you explain how that would be and explain how, um, how this is uh, fair and balanced? So, um, you know, maybe well, speak to some nuances yeah, sure. about a situation that could be that. Sure. Okay. sure. Well, I'll, I'll tell you folks, just by virtue of having this, capacity building and, and community planning program speaks to the priority that we put here. Most states don't have this for their broadband programs. And so this is something that we really wanted to do that we were prioritizing from day one, that even after the, um, I think the last several months of uncertainty, we valued and pushed through. And so we easily could have said, let's wait until next year, but we wanted to do this that bad. And so that's why we're having this conversation and, and, and that we have this, this uh, NOFO out there. And so I think the, the, the piece that really bears emphasizing here is, okay, Illinois has the nation's largest infrastructure grant program. And so don't let that be a, de a detriment to, to the importance of planning or the fact that there's a big difference between the two funding uh, streams here. Secondly, we're looking to pair a lot of best practice curriculum and consultative expertise to this grant program. The dollar amount, I'll be honest, is not the real value of this. The real value is the process, the engagement, what takes place over the, the course of the next, you know, you know, several months up to a year. That's the real value of this. And so I just really, uh, I push back hard on that because uh, it's really fortunate that we have this program that we've got the great partnership we have with uh, Area Philanthropy, with the Benton Institute for Broadband and Society. And uh, this is something that I, I'm gonna be very proud of, I think, uh, you know, throughout the course of uh, our programming moving forward, because I think it has the ability to really lift up communities, strengthen your voice, uh, and, and leave you in a position to have, you know, I think, a, you know, much better options and, uh, and, and uh, make much better progress in terms of adoption and utilization. And so we really, we really wanna to chart that right course for strong partnerships. And we think that this is the way to, to start that conversation. So thanks for that opportunity, Nancy. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, anytime. <laughs> so um, there was another question about how could a Wi-Fi hotspot get added to the map on the website? Um, I'm just gonna let you take oh, that sure. question yeah. as it is. So yeah. So when, I, when we started out here and I ran through our website, because um, you know, we're proud of what we put up there and we want folks to know about it, um, we talked about that drive up Wi-Fi hotspot map. And uh, we, um, it, it's really, it's unrelated to, to this grant program here, but I did point it out at the outset of the webinar here today. And so if folks have any additions they'd like to see made to that uh, resource on our website, just shoot us an email at broadband at illinois.gov and we can talk about how to make that happen. Again, broadband at illinois.gov. Yeah, and I, and I also want to mention there's a couple questions about 
um, just uh, clarification on links and I can definitely include that email Matt as well as some of the links that people are asking about the newsletter and things like that in the follow-up email um, just wanted you all to know that um, there's a question about if this is uh, one one on matching funds yeah, and uh, this is different from our infrastructure grant program. There is no requirement for, for matching funds. And so if that's something that a community or an applicant would like to bring into their application or the process, either on the front end or, or over the course of this um, process, you're certainly welcome to do that. We'd love to, to add that kind of value and leverage resources. But we also understand that not all communities can do that. And so it's not a requirement. And so if you apply and you don't bring any non-state dollars to the mix, that's okay. Uh, just make your best case in your application for why you should be one of our, our uh, you know, round one cohort members. Thanks. Is this application process to be done by the applicant and follow up documents cost of a grant writer will be high for a $15,000 grant. So, um, I'm sorry, Nancy, if you asked about a grant writer or, uh, you know, just kind of leveraging, I guess, expertise to help with the, 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 the program or the deliverables. Yeah, we recognize that some communities might want to do more on this front and that $15,000 isn't enough to do everything you might want to do. And so what we want to do is we want to put a target amount of state resources on the table. Uh, if a community is looking at leveraging non-state resources, that's great. But we want to help communities kind of take that next step start the conversation if that's where you're at in the, the progress, uh, forge strong partnerships with various you know, community organizations, regional entities, your provider community. The whole point here is to help communities make progress. And this is not in and of itself the end of the story. Rather, this is the start of that, that, that march to progress. And so we, we recognize that there could be opportunities for, for year two uh, resources that we can explore through the course of this program. Uh, we want to help communities identify those. There could possibly be state resources that could be uh, at play uh, for infrastructure or for uh, digital equity and adoption. And so the whole point here is this is the start of this conversation, uh, not, not necessarily $15,000 uh, a one-year uh, process and you're done. And so I just want to emphasize that. Okay, I got another question here. We have several questions left. They're coming in now. So I think people's, hey, people nice. are starting to get their gears going and really um, taking advantage of the question answer, which is wonderful. Well, and you got me talking too, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Wait, I was that. <laughs> so uh, what's the best way to determine whether or not our geographic area has an existing need for broadband and whether it's access adoption or utilization. For example, uh, this particular participant is learning about other technologies and they, um, they wanna know if it's fair to assume that individuals in their community utilize Comcast with, I think they meant to say uh, 25 uh, MPS. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure, uh, yeah. Sure. yeah, so a little bit of a typo. Um, and uh, that's what they're curious about hearing and uh, what sure. would you do? Well, I'll tell you this, you know, there's not an area of the state that is ineligible for funding. And so if, if you know, I mean, it's kind of one of those things, you, you know, if, if you could do more in this area, if you need stronger partnerships, if there's more work on digital um, inclusion or equity or adoption, you have that sense. And so there's a couple of resources on our website that can, that can help you make the case or to understand current access. For instance, we have the, our wireline uh, access map, which is a, a tab on that website on that, that uh, vertical menu. You click on that and it's going to give you information on the, the Federal Communications Commission data on broadband access around the state. And the FCC does this for, you know, provides this information for all states. The data is not perfect. And if you look at that and you zoom in, you, you may realize, geez, the map tells us that we've got service at this level, but we, we really don't. Or in some cases, it may say that you have service that's, that's beneath what you, you, you experience. The whole point is the map is not perfect, nor should the map be used as a determinant for applying for the grant funding or not. And so you can reference it if you're in a, a completely unserved area and you say, hey, geez, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got to form strong partnerships. Um, we're really interested in this infrastructure piece, for instance. 
um, certainly that's one tool to use. But don't don't let that dissuade you know your interest in the program. And likewise for adoption or utilization, you know we gave you those definitions at the outset for a reason. They're not perfect definitions by any stretch, but we gave those to you for a reason just to help you kind of think about one way of of defining these terms and bringing those terms and that thinking into your application. You don't need to hit on each one of those, the, you know, the, the access, the um, adoption, the utilization, but the extent to which your community is experiencing a challenge in one or more of those areas, suss that out in your application, um, put together the right kind of you know, partnerships among the community to, to build out that steering committee, uh, at least loosely at first, and then you know, give us your best ideas in an application and we'd love to, to try to work with you. Okay, I have a question from Dr. Johnson. Um, if a school community wants to apply, should they just focus on the data linked to the school community or should they try to obtain all the data from the serving towns? So what, or, what I would say, oh, I'm sorry, Nancy, did you have something to add? Well, yes, yeah, so, or would the data from the school district be sufficient? But I wanted you to really get the full breadth of the question. So there's not one way to do this. And so if, if an applicant, for instance, a school district, you have data, uh, whether it's on your student population, uh, and you would like to, to utilize that, focus on that, and kind of telling your story in your application, that's great. But there are resources right on our website that you can look to and say, geez, you know, our district is in the middle of this unserved area. It's a, a broadband desert, as the governor, governor uh, likes to say. Uh, those are the areas that we want to focus attention to. You want to draw attention to, uh, to that need. You're certainly welcome to do that, too. And so I just don't want folks to get bogged down in the process. Um, there are some boxes that you have to check in your application, but it's really about kind of making your best argument uh, for either the need or what you want to do based upon where you're at in this process. And so I don't mean to, to leave it kind of vague, but on the flip side, you know, give us your best, your, your best application. And um, we've got some resources available on our website, particularly when it comes to access on the infrastructure front. Um, but if you know that there's an area that needs attention that you're, you're lagging behind that you'd like to learn more about, feel free to make that you know, the, a focal point of your application. Great. We have a question from Beth on whether this webinar is going to be offered again and uh, just the, the she was not able to join on time today. And I, I want to use that to let everybody know that I'm going to be sending a link to our archives. The recording for this um, session is going to be posted on there later today. As, um, as far as knowing if there's going to be a, another webinar offered, we I think we continue to offer webinars um, with some of the work and partnership work that Matt's doing on this platform. And so uh, definitely stay tuned and we'll send out announcements for future webinars as well. Um, and, and you'll get the information on those and always where, where those recordings are gonna be. And then we have another question here that um, is asking if broadband utilization covers building the capacity of parents in our school community. It's from doc Dr. Johnson again. Um, and it's uh, whether offering them broadband access through this grant is possible. So I, uh, access is, is the key question there. I think, you know, we're open-minded to how the, the grant dollars are utilized. And so on the back end of this, if there's a pilot that actually focuses on access. We're open to that. Um, I think you look at the broadband steering committee, for instance, you, you could have members of, you know, your, your, you know, your PAC or your, your school parent community involved in that and, and be on kind of the front lines to those conversations around how to leverage this opportunity and the resources that the, the grant brings to bear. The, the point is, yeah, I mean, I think that that's in the realm of possible here. There's not one way to do this. Um, you know, I, I, I guess I guess I'll leave it at that because I just I don't I don't want to be overly prescriptive in what we're, we're we're telling applicants to do here. I think if you're a school and you're interested in applying, make sure you're talking to other you know community members and that this isn't simply an application coming from the school district that doesn't you know bring into account healthcare perspectives or perspectives from the business community. Certainly perspectives you know from teachers at school and parents at home. 
I, I think are important. And the same goes, you know, for, you know, whether you're a nonprofit health care organization or you're the local EDA or, or, you know, a city or a county or a village, if you want to be the lead applicant on this and you've got a great story or you, you think that you've got a lot to benefit from this kind of partnership and engagement, we'd love to hear from you. But make sure that you're spending some time here the next two weeks reaching out to those community partners, uh, including the broadband provider community, if that makes sense in your area, uh, to, to, to bring those voices to the table to walk through this together. And so, again, there's not one way to do this. Um, I think the emphasis I'm trying to, to, to make today is we want it to be community driven, representative of the larger community, um, not siloed in terms of one aspect of broadband utilization like education or healthcare or economic development, uh, but rather touching upon various areas uh, of that broadband experience. I think that's going to make for a competitive application. And I hope that, I hope that makes sense to folks. Great. We have um, several more questions. We're getting towards that hour mark. We don't mind staying on as long as there's questions. Um, and if so, if some of you are um, getting off of the call, please know that you can get back on to the recording and listen to the remainder. But we're going to go as, as long as we have questions. Um, so the next one is about, uh, you had mentioned best practice curriculum, and right. they want to know who would be the recipient of the, that curriculum. Curriculum for, for who exactly? What audience? No. Great question, and I and, I, and I should have known to offer more detail if I'm on a you know a webinar here with a, a bunch of folks from education, and so curriculum will will perk up the ears. Um, you know, I'm the son of two retired school teachers, after all, so I uh, yeah I, I get it. Um, I think the point here is there's been a lot of really good thinking about this nationally, and and we don't want to to sit here you know the Illinois Office of Broadband and say hey we've got the best ideas or the best you know, um, programming to move this process forward. We may have some good ideas and some value to really add to this, but we also want to leverage the best ideas that have been utilized. You know, for my home state of Minnesota, for instance, the Blandon Foundation has done a tremendous job, you know, with their, their Blandon broadband communities. And to be honest, this is kind of emulated after that in some small part. And so they've got an approach. There's the Intelligent Community Forum that, that Blandon has leveraged that we are, are referencing herein. That they've spent a lot of time putting together a framework and really trying to get at that question, you know, what sorts of attributes define a quote unquote intelligent community? What should communities be doing to position themselves, you know, on that access adoption utilization front to succeed, you know, in a 21st century digital economy? And likewise, we have organizations such as you know, Next Century Cities that, ha that has uh, Illinois based uh, community membership. Uh, and, and members around the country that try to serve as a resource, you know, for communities looking to make meaningful partnerships and advance the, the broadband ball, so to speak. And so that's the, the best practices curriculum that, that I, I, I refer to. Uh, it's not a big binder with uh, a lot of, you know, homework or, or, um, or lessons or anything like that, but rather it is an acknowledgement that there are frameworks put in place that we want to leverage and bring into the conversation that we have. And again, I said at the outset and a couple of times along the way, I think the real value in this process is putting that representative broadband steering committee together, engaging with the, the Office of Broadband, with the Benton Institute, with, the, with our project team that we'll be assembling and our national experts on a regular basis, uh, engaging with other members of that round one cohort, and then building towards a broadband strategic plan and, and thinking about next steps. And, and some of this might happen, I mean, halfway through the program, a community might see an opportunity for funding and want to leverage this engagement as a way of, of building partnerships. And I think that's great. And so again, I hope that this, this, this is, uh, you know, helpful for folks. I don't mean to dodge any of these questions, but I think that uh, we're really interested in, in hearing the best ideas that are out there and want, and we don't want to be too overly prescriptive in, in what we're asking for or, uh, or from whom. And sorry, I don't mean to filibuster. We can keep going on here. And if there are a few more questions, yeah. I, I've got the time. There's one more question, but it's it's also if, you know if, from what I'm hearing, you're saying put put the application in, and um, I'm also I want want people to know that um, if you're already signed up for these webinars that that you're on right now, then you're sort of in the loop, and and you're going to hear about future webinars um, on continued opportunities. And I just wanted to let you know that because I think some people are are wondering if they're doing things the right way, um, always ask those questions. And on the follow, 
up email, I will have uh, that broadband um, email in there so that you can send emails to Matt and ask questions. So this final question uh, here is, is there any way we can know if someone else in our community is considering writing this grant so we do not duplicate resources? So are you going to be checking for that possibly and, and uh, looking at that at all? Is your office going to be looking at that, Matt? So I, um, I'll, I'll tell you, we, uh, we did this for our Illinois uh, infrastructure grant program, and we can do it for this one as well. It's called the kind of the, the, the um, making connections tab on our website. And, you know, I, it's not the be all end all, but uh, an important point here is that if a uh, community member wants to, to make a match, make a connection with another potential partner, and you just don't necessarily know who that partner might be, you're welcome to shoot us a line at, at broadband at illinois.gov. Let us know uh, if you have um, an interest in partnering and we can, we can post, you know, whatever information you'd like us to share. Uh, and, and for folks in a given community, if, if everyone's kind of looking at the same resource, you might be able to make connections that way. I think organically, you know, we'll try to, to be helpful too. I mean, if, if a request does come in, we certainly can, um, can try to, to, to spread the word or, or make those connections informally. Um, but I think there's a, a piece to that question that's really important. And if, if you don't already know who might be applying from a community, uh, that might give you pause. Reach out. Make sure you've thought through who could be applying for this sort of thing. Would they be a good partner for us? Are we talking to the partners that they would be talking to? I think that that's maybe a good reminder at the outset that we really want this to be community driven. We want folks to be looking for those community partners around the way. And so again, we'll try to be as helpful as we can. You can certainly send us an email at broadband at illinois.gov and we can, we can enter, you know, a, a potential applicant or partners, you know, information into our making connections resource. Um, but again, we want this to be organic. Really think, think about making those connections on your own end too, if you can. But we understand that some communities are quite large and there are a lot of various organizations operating therein. And so to the extent we can be helpful, we will. And hey, Nancy, I wanted to make another point here too. And in, in, uh, I know that uh, the uh, Illinois State Board of Education um, just posted a, a note here. Um, they've got some grant funding coming down the pike in the coming weeks. More information will be available on, on that opportunity. And so I don't want folks to think that this is the be all end all for, uh, for schools in Illinois. Uh, this is a modest grant program that we're highlighting here today. One that we really are, are interested in having uh, kind of community um, balanced approaches that leverage you know, various community actors and and stakeholders in a given community, including schools, um, but that if, if you are a school district looking for uh, some immediate relief on the access front or maybe doing similar work, there may be some more news coming down the pike soon. And so, uh, so look for that. And from the Office of Broadband's perspective, we'll certainly do whatever we can to, to help highlight that, that work and, uh, and, and point folks to it. Thank you. Yeah, it's certainly a unique um, grant initiative, this, this particular grant um, around planning and capacity building and stuff like that. So it's really neat to hear, hear further information. And I do think that participants are, um, you know, coming around to, to understanding that this is more of a soft, soft touch grant. Um, and I really hope that you get a lot of applicants uh, for this grant as well. I hope people can take, well, take this forward today. Yeah, well, um, well, we hope so too. And I should mention, Nancy, too, again, a reminder, the reason that this is such a tight timeline is it's current fiscal year funds and that we have to have these grants made by the end of the fiscal year, June 30th. We had hoped to do this two months ago, but uh, the schedule got altered. And so it's a little compressed, but we still see so much value in the community planning and capacity building effort that that we're, we're talking about this today and trying to be as helpful as we can for applicants. And so hopefully, hopefully folks understand that. Great, thanks. Th thanks for um, letting us know why that is. And it's, um, it, it, it's certainly understandable. Um, so thanks. I want to just say thank you to everybody for participating in today's webinar. Matt, I don't know if you have anything else you want to say. There's no more questions. And I was just going to close it out with a few comments. Um, so do you have anything else you'd like to say to our audience? Again, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, University of Illinois Extension. Uh, thank you to the Benton Institute for Broadband and so uh, Society based in Evanston, Illinois. Uh, this is a great partnership that we've, uh, we've established and we're really looking forward to, to standing up this uh, Illinois Connected Communities Program and, uh, and hearing from a lot of applicants. And, and we hope this is not a one-time deal that we, uh, we can build off of this in the months to come.
Great. So we hope that you're all going to also be able to join uh, on future webinars. Uh, if you're on this, you, you get the announcements and we have a, a June 3rd webinar about access and equity issues in broadband development. Uh, this is uh, the, the fourth and final webinar in a series that the Benton Institute for Broadband and Society, the, the Illinois Office of Broadband and Illinois Extension has partnered on to, to offer the series. That's going to be on June 3rd at 11.30 a.m. Central Time. I'll include the registration link in the follow-up email. You most all are may be registered, um, but uh, I'll include that nonetheless. And also, if you want to pass on the information, uh, please do so. Uh, thanks again for your interest. And uh, without further ado, I will sign off for today. Um, see that there's some questions coming in, but I'll, I'll go ahead and say thanks for attending. I hope everybody has a great weekend.